In a study of cell phone usage and brain hemispheric dominance, an internet survey was emailed to 6,983 subjects randomly, selected from an online group involved with ears. There were 1,317 surveys returned. Use a 0.01 significance level. That's going to be our alpha. So whenever you see the words significance level or level of significance, you know that's alpha. To test the claim that the return rate is less than 20%. Okay, so in this problem, we're dealing with proportions, so we have to figure out n and x. So n is the total number of observations, and x is the total number of successes. It looks like we have 6,983 observations and 1,317 surveys. All right, so now we're ready to do the first step, which is set up our null and alternate hypotheses. So we have the null hypothesis and the alternate or alternative hypothesis. So because it says percentage here as a percentage, the symbol is P. Now you can look here and it also says P, but it's really better to really, really understand why it's P. We're talking about a percentage, so that's why it's P. So P, and it says less than 20%. So less than, that's strong. So we're okay. Our claim is less than, so we can keep the strong, and that becomes H1. And then HO is always equals no matter what. All right, now we can go ahead and pick the first choice. Let's see, so it looks like it's going to be C. Check answer, good stuff. All right, now it wants to test statistic. That's step two for us. And then step three for us is the p-value, so we'll do that as well. So we go to question help, and we go to stat crunch. I'm gonna click this little box so it's easier to see. So we go to stat, proportions, one sample with summary. Okay, it's talking about proportions, and we only have one sample. We only have one N. Later on, we'll have two samples, and we'll use two samples. So with summary, successes in this problem is 1317. Observations is 6983. Okay, and let's see. Oh, it's P equals 0 0.20, so this needs to be 0 0.20, so we change it. And then we just have to change the inequality to less than. So let's change it to less than. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click Compute. All right, and then write down some answers. So we have our test statistic. That's Z stat. So Z equals negative 2.3813984. And the P value in this case is 0 0.0086. 0.0086. Okay, so I'm going to close stack crunch. Okay, close this and enter the answer. So it wants two decimals for the p value. So negative 2.38. Let's try it. Yes. And it wants three decimals for the p value. So the p value in this case rounded to three decimals would be 0 0.009. So 0 0.009. 0 0.009. Good stuff. All right, now we have to fill in the blank here. So let's go ahead and do it our way, and then we'll go back to the homework. So in step four, we have to look at two things. We have to look at the p-value, which is right here, 0 0.009, and we have to look at the alpha. So if the p-value is smaller, we reject. So it is. The p-value is smaller than alpha, so we reject h sub 0. Now we'll do our interpretation. To do the interpretation, you always start by mentioning the level of significance. So in this case, it's 0.01, so it's 1%. So at the 1% level of significance. And now we have to decide if there is or there is not sufficient evidence. So let me use a different color here. So I can only do it once because once I cross it out, that's it. So we are rejecting HO. So when we reject this, there is enough evidence to say this is true. If we fail to reject, then there is not enough evidence to say H1 is true. So if you reject HO, there is enough evidence, evidence to say that the proportion is less than 0.20. So there is, there is sufficient, you can say enough. I like using the word sufficient evidence. to claim, so there is sufficient evidence to claim that, and then you can usually go to the last sentence in the problem. Oh, it's even, it's perfect. 
to claim that. So we, they even have the same words there. Claim that, and then you just go right here. The return rate is less than 20%. The return rate is less than 20%. So it's right there, that sentence, let me highlight it so you can see it. Claim that, and then everything after the words claim that. The return rate is less than 20%. So right there, the return rate is less than 20%. So because the p-value is less than the significance level, we reject the null hypothesis. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the return rate is less than 20%. Absolutely perfect. What a great problem. Um, since this video is kind of short, let me just take a few seconds to mention some other random thing about hypothesis testing. Um, so when we're doing the hypothesis test, uh, just a random fact. So the, the test statistic, this number here, is computed using the fact that P equals 0 0.20, right? It's a formula. It's actually a formula. So behind the scenes, there is a formula for this thing. And it's, this is computed assuming that HO is true. The p-value is computed using the test statistic. So the p-value is also computed assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So again, the p-value is a probability, and it's computed using the, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So if the p-value is small, it's very unlikely that the null hypothesis is true. It's called the rare event rule. So if you have a probability and it's computed under some assumption and your probability is small, then it's very likely your assumption is wrong. So the p-value is a probability and it's computed under the assumption of the null hypothesis always. So if the p-value is small, it's unlikely that the null hypothesis, is, null hypothesis is true. So how small does it have to be? Well, the smaller the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis. So we control it, right? We control it with alpha. So as long as the p-value is smaller than 1% in this problem, we reject the null hypothesis. What is alpha? Alpha is the probability of making a mistake, right? Alpha is the probability that we messed up. There is a 1% chance that we messed up, right? It's the probability of rejecting H sub 0 when in fact it is true. So if you do this 100 times, 1% of the time, you're going to reject H0 when in fact it is true. Uh, you might say, well, if alpha is the probability of making a mistake, why can't you make it super small? Like, why can't we make alpha equal to this so we never mess up? Well, if we make it super small, then the p-value won't be smaller. And it's only when the p-value is smaller that there is sufficient evidence. So it's nice to say useful things sometimes. So we typically keep alpha at 0.01 or 0.05. So um, that was a bit of a rant, but I hope that made some sense. Uh, and I hope this video helped uh, you in some way. That's it.